Welcome to APK. My name is Sasha Gutfreund. I'm the lead developer. And today I will talk to you about this piece of software. Uh, APK stands for Agent Based Pathogen Kinetics Model. It's a simulation of the drug user population in the Chicago area and it specifically examines the spread of hepatitis C virus in that population. Uh, I will show to you five different parts of APK today, uh, including the, the controller, the graphical controller, <coughs> the starting of the simulation, explaining how the display of the simulation works, what it does. I will show you the simulation running and I will interact with features of the simulation. And finally, I will show you the epidemiology window which allows to track the spread of hepatitis C. So let us start. Uh, this is the first screen. This is what you see when you launch the graphical version of APK. Now, there's also uh, a batch version of APK which uh, is used only for data collection. Uh, so this is a graphical version. <coughs> you can see here APK and Repass Symphony is the platform which we use for developing this piece of software. Over here, the scenario tree essentially is a description of the simulation and all the things that are going to be happening in the simulation. But we don't have to worry about now. What we, uh, I want to mention now is this parameter screen here. If you click on the parameter screen, you can actually decide uh, what kind of simulation you're going to run. For, most importantly, you can choose to dis how many people are going to be in the simulation. So by default, there's 2,000 people in the simulation. We can reduce it to, say, 200 instead of 2,000. Uh, various parameters could be controlled. For example, transmissibility, the likelihood of transmitting an infection during a needle-sharing uh, episode. Um, there's, a there's some other parameters here as well. Now, the most important screen that you need to know is this over here. Uh, there are actually three buttons here. This button here initializes the run. It creates a new simulation that uh, is going to have those parameters in it. Uh, after the simulation is, is initialized, you, we can press start and then the simulation will just proceed to run to uh, simulate all the different interactions. You can also use this one, which is going to step the simulation one step, one event into the future. This button here will stop the simulation, and this here will reset it, allow us to create a new simulation with new parameters. So let's press initialize and create a new simulation. It'll take a few seconds for this to happen. Here we are then with the display. Uh, the simulation is now initialized and we are at time zero. Uh, so the time is indicated by ticks. Um, as ticks are representative of days. So if you see one, that will be to represent that one day has passed and two will be two days. Uh, what you see in this display is a geospatial representation of the population. Uh, this is a piece of software from NASA actually that has satellite images and features of Earth. Uh, we are only going to focus on the area around Chicago which includes Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan and Indiana. Uh, now let me point out a couple of other features in this display. We have on the left a choice of layers. Uh, this, this choice here allows us to uh, select what is actually going to appear on the map. The most important choice we, we can make is to, whether to show uh, the zones in which the IDUs live. These are zip code regions. The links between the users uh, or and the users themselves. So by clicking this we can uh, show or remove the, the drug users. Uh, now if I'm going to press start run the simulation will automatically zoom in on the Chicago area. And 
here we are. I pressed um, I pressed uh, start again, and so we can stop this pause the simulation for a little bit. Uh, we now see a bird's eye view of Chicago, uh, the city itself here, and uh, uh, it's taken from simulated point 70 kilometers above the city. As a simulation run, <clears throat> what you are seeing here are uh, the uh, drug users themselves. They are represented by little dots. Uh, the little dots are blue when the person is uh, negative and red when uh, he has the virus. Uh, you, you also see the geographic regions, the zones in which, uh, which the agents uh, live. Uh, and these are sort of the green ones, and you also see the yellow. Yellow are the social connections that are that are forming between those uh, drug users. The simulation <coughs> runs uh, as it runs. The simulation actually uh, runs quite fast, so you can see that we are already almost uh, eight, uh, one thousand eight hundred days into the simulation. That's about. Uh, it's about five years into the simulation. Uh, you, a lot of the social ties are actually happening uh, at the very within zones. There are some social ties that are happening at long distance. The simulation, f for reasons of computational efficiency, the simulation does not display them all the time. Uh, let me pause the simulation and now show you some of the analytical capabilities. I'm pressing the plus button to make the simulation zoom in uh, on a small area. It's really fascinating to actually see uh, some of the images here uh, because those agents here they're actually where the drug user population of Chicago is uh, and those people there are people uh, that are actually where the agents are so there are drug users with the same attributes who uh, like the agents who live in this particular zip code area uh, you can see that a lot there's this area here the west side of Chicago has a fairly substantial drug using population uh, now I'm gonna click through the different options here and you can see how the zones could be removed uh, as well as the links could be removed so we can we can remove them we can just see the agents where they are and what their status is if I click on this agent we will be able to see <coughs> on the left some information about that person we will be able to see what uh, what is his current status. It'll take, it'll take a second. To come up. Okay, here we are. Um, uh, so notice that um, the, this person is a male. Uh, he is uh, chronically hepatitis C uh, infected. Uh, and his simulation has given him some random name, Jaden. It's a fictitious name. Uh, the simulation sa says that he has one social connection and he is currently in treatment. Uh, his location is uh, this particular code, uh, uh, this particular zip code. And you, if I activate the Zoan agents, you will actually see the zip code where this person is. Um, so I've shown you the overall geographical display as well as uh, some of the stuff you can do with it. Uh, last thing I want to show is the epidemiological display and you can pull it out by clicking on the epidemiology. The epidemiological display shows the overall prevalence in the city. Uh, over we have over here on the horizontal we have the ticks. Uh, so this is time in days. And on the vertical, we have the number of agents uh, in different classes. 
Initially, we started the simulation with 200 agents, of which the majority were naive. They were never exposed to hepatitis C. Uh, the simulation, <clears throat> as it runs, uh, shows that some people will become infected. In fact, they will become infected quite rapidly. Uh, you can see that after one year, uh, most of those naive individuals are already no longer naive. They've already been exposed. In fact, the epidemic peaks about half a year, uh, about, about 250 days into the simulation, um, the, the incidence actually reaches a peak. Following that, <coughs> uh, we, have a, uh, we still have an acutely infected population, and those acutely infected population are actually new users who are coming into the population. Uh, remember that sim we have constant immigration and out-migration into the city, and so this are uh, so we achieve kind of a steady state of acutely infected people because of new arrivals into the city. Uh, the chronic population uh, have plateaus as well, uh, some around 1,000 days, and that's what we see the chronic population. And we also have the green line, which are the resistant individual. This is essentially APK so far. Uh, there is a considerable amount of work that's going to go into uh, the adding features, adding calibration, adding validation to the software.